water hooked up, filled it up with sorghum. And out here in this pivot, it's about 20 acres that we're putting in. The planter's actually a nine row. It's kind of an odd number. The reason for that is it's our tractor. We could narrow the tires up to straddle two rows, and that would be like normal, right? You straddle even rows, not odd number of rows. But we didn't want to have them that narrow all the time. That's kind of a pain to move them in and out. So we just left them spread and straddling three rows. Been out sick the past couple days. We were planning on planting today. I was like, I really don't want to miss that. So, here we are, half sick, just getting it. pretty close to <clears throat> being done with this field just about out of seed <laughs> it's kind of a simple foolproof way of knowing if you still have seed left it's just these rods sit on top of the seed and as the seed goes down and out this rod lowers down so you know how much seed you got left but once it gets to the bottom like that it uh, doesn't mean that it's all the way out there's still a little bit in the bottom usually so you want to keep an eye on it when it gets that low piece <clears throat> about five acres we'll go plant that and then that's the last of the sorghum we're putting in done so let's fold this thing up
Easy as that. It's time to go home. Let's put this one in. Maybe not. Maybe we should let that keep that out and then go down the road and unfold it. Let's see what happens. I gotta watch these lines when I fold it up. Sometimes they'll get caught on something and then they can actually pull apart or rip off. First thing you're going to want to do after you hook up the planter is set the correct height of it. Okay, so on this, the book says 16 inches from the bottom of the frame to the ground. And then set your three point stop. When you raise and lower the three point, it needs to stop to where this is at 16 inches. Next thing, the downforce on these right here, these T handles that are holding two springs right here. We have ours set in the middle and that did a pretty good job. Going up top is lighter down for us and then all the way down is the heaviest possible. If you go too light, you might wanna look out for your press wheel not engaging all the way. It might slip every now and then because there's not enough force. That could happen. How to set the depth on these planters is pretty simple. Right over here, there is a half moon or a cam right here and all you got to do is pull this out like that and then you can turn it like that so say we'll just set it at like eight or nine so you can see how far the press wheel can move up off the ground when you have it set that deep so if you want to go shallower, just pull this out, bring it down, and then it'll walk back in. You try to move it on three, you can see it hardly even comes off the ground. So that's how to set your depth on these. The one through 10 really doesn't mean inches, centimeters, anything like that. Okay, it's just a reference number I guess it's kind of getting a little stormy so another super important adjustment on these is do you want to make sure your closing your packer wheel is directly in alignment with um, your opener in the bottom here so how you adjust that or realign it if it got out of alignment is these two bolts right here loosen them and then I guess because I've never done it but that's what the book says then you can realign this so it gets back in center then tighten them back up. Nowhere in the manual or on the units does it say high speed planter. All right, so they're ground driven. And really the slower you go with these, the better. I was planting about three miles an hour, like 3.1 miles an hour, I think. Just don't want to be going super fast because you really want that seed to fall directly down at the exact depth that you set it. And if you're going fast, it's really not going to be that accurate, especially if your seed bed isn't super smooth either. What we also do, before we fill the K 
cans. So we'll dump some powdered graphite in the bottom of the can here. That kind of keeps everything lubed up down in there. Instead of using, you know, like PB or some wet lubricant, you don't want to be putting that in here. You want some sort of dry lubricant. Something you want to keep an eye on is make sure, I forget what these are called, but they swipe the seat off and they can get worn. They're super easy to replace. All you gotta do is take this one bolt off and then this, uh, this piece comes out and then you can just get new ones. All right, we are headed out to the North Wiper and we're gonna do a light cultivation on it. Take out any weeds that might have started and uh, then we should have a pretty decent seed bed for planting corn, probably maybe at the end of the day but most likely tomorrow morning. We're not gonna be using the John Deere 71 Flex Planter. We managed to find something with a little more precision on the planter end and on the tractor end. First need to get both of these wiper pivots cultivated and then we can go get the other planter and the Next piece of equipment that's going to be out in this field. 